Hello and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you about dynamic textures and how to make them. So a dynamic texture is a texture that changes the way it looks over the course of an animation and it does so by using keyframes. So at the beginning of this animation this looks like a metal ball. Towards the end of the animation it's a bright white light because it gets heated up, loses its temper, starts to uh, get brighter and brighter as the timeline progresses. Let's show you how I've done this. Here's the node tree for this uh, animation. The material output is driven by a mix shader. A mix shader takes two shaders, in this case an anisotropic and an emission shader, and changes which one is more biased based on how you have the slider moved. The slider has a value assigned to it. At zero, it completely is biased towards the anisotropic, and at one, it's completely biased towards the uh, emission, or whatever one's plugged into the bottom. Instead of having this value driven by our mouse, we're having this value driven by this value node here. So let's plug that back in. This value node has keyframes assigned to it, which basically means that at any given point on this graph, it has a number associated with it. Yellow means that we have gone in and defined the value. Green means that it's used math to decide the value for us. So at frame one, if you uh, type zero in here and then hit the letter I with your mouse over it, it assigns that value. I'll show that in better detail on one of these other ones that we haven't assigned a keyframe to in just a moment. And then at frame uh, 100, we did the same thing and applied a value of 1. You can assign a keyframe to any one of these sliders. So for example, um, maybe we want uh, at this frame here, let's, um, let's uh, we want this to be very anisotropic, but then as it progresses, I mean, we don't want it to, it looks still anisotropic right there. We want it to kind of look like it's developing some scale on it. So just remember that was at 0.5. We'll set this at zero at this frame. So with our mouse over it, we'll hit I. And then at frame one, where it was 0.5, we'll type that in again, 0.5, and we'll hit I again. And now it's locked at that on frame 1 and at frame whatever it was, frame 30 or so, it's locked at 0. And so it looks a lot like a metal and then it starts to fade and look more just like a maybe a polished ball. It loses its temper and progresses onward. Color ramps, uh, self-explanatory, it's fairly intuitive. Um, Basically, they work a lot like a mix shader, but rather than taking two nodes, it takes the, uh, this gradient here and then uses this factor to decide where it is, with zero being to the far left and one being all the way to the right. On the anisotropic, I've added uh, a gradient for it to start to lose its shine. Um, if you wanted to go and find at what temperatures the steel changes its colors, more power to you, and at exactly what colors it turns, uh, you could do so. And then here I've just added the different color gradients for it to start glowing. Anyway, uh, oh, and then one last thing on the emission, as it gets brighter and bright, or as it uh, gets hotter and hotter, it gets brighter and brighter. And I've done so by plugging this value node into a multiply node and plugging the multiply node into a strength. I've assigned keyframes to it to uh, make it shine a little bit brighter as it progresses and uh, that's all there really is to it since it's being driven off of this uh, value right here as this increases so does this if you have any questions about this tutorial uh, please feel free to ask oops let's uh i want to scale i'm going to end the tutorial by going back to the node editor so you guys can see what the node tree looks like you want to see what it looks like go ahead and pause here thanks for watching